we've seen how to show that a set of vectors in Rn is linearly independent. These methods, though, are not applicable to all vector spaces. For example, how can we determine if a set of functions is linearly independent? Sometimes it's pretty easy just from prior knowledge. For example, we know that sine of 2x and sine x cosine x are certainly not linearly independent because sine of 2x equals 2 sine x cosine x. So I'm able to determine if these are linearly independent just because I know my trig identities. Or we may look at this set, 1, e to the x and e to the 2x, and say, yeah, we know that these functions are linearly independent. There's just nothing we could do to combine 1 and e to the x, for example, to get e to the 2x. That's just not going to happen. But of course, saying this set of functions is linearly independent is not a proof. There is, in fact, a method that is sometimes useful for determining if a set of functions is linearly independent. It involves something called the Ronskian. We're going to see how the Ronskian can tell us if a set of functions is linearly independent, and at the end of the video, we'll use it to show that, indeed, this set is linearly independent. First, let's see what the heck the Ronskian even is. Let's say we have n functions, f1 through fn, and these functions are n minus 1 times differentiable on the real numbers. Notice I have these bold f's here just to emphasize that in this context we're thinking about these functions as vectors. If these functions are n minus 1 times differentiable, then we could construct this n by n matrix. There are n columns, one for each of the n functions, and there are n rows. There's one row for just the functions, and then n minus 1 rows for the n minus 1 derivatives. The determinant of this matrix is the Ronskian, denoted w of x. The Ronskian here is, of course, a function of x because it's a determinant of a matrix composed of functions of x. So this determinant is called the Ronskian of the n functions. What does this tell us about linear dependence or linear independence among these functions? Well, let's assume that our n functions are linearly dependent in the vector space of n minus 1 times continuously differentiable functions. If we assume they're linearly dependent, well, by definition, that would mean there exist scalars k1 through kn that are not all zero, so that if we multiply the functions by these scalars and combine them, as you see here, we get zero for all values of x. Certainly, if this combination happens to equal zero for a particular value of x, that wouldn't mean that the functions are linearly dependent. It must be the case that this combination is equal to zero for all x. That's what it would mean for these functions to be linearly dependent. So we have this linear combination on the left, which is equal to zero, and these functions are all n minus 1 times differentiable, so we could take n minus 1 derivatives on both sides of this equation. That would produce this linear system, the original equation that we have from assuming dependence, and then the first derivative, the second derivative, all the way up through the n minus 1th derivative of both sides of the equation. On the right side, of course, the derivative of zero is just zero. And this system of equations is significant because this is a homogeneous linear system whose coefficient matrix is precisely the matrix whose determinant is the Ronskian. This is the linear system that we have constructed. There's the coefficient matrix, our functions and their n minus one derivatives, getting multiplied by this column vector of those scalars, k1 through kn. And by assuming that the functions are linearly dependent, we've assumed that there's some column vector, some set of values for k1 through kn, that satisfy this equation, a non-trivial solution. Because remember, we said that these scalars, they can't all be zero. It has to be a non-trivial solution to establish that linear dependence. So when we assume that this has a non-trivial solution for every x, that means that the determinant of this coefficient matrix, which is the Ronskian, is zero. That's an equivalence we've previously proven. If there's a non-trivial solution to a homogeneous linear system like this, the determinant of the coefficient matrix must 
be zero. This is the equivalence theorem I mentioned, link in the description to where we prove this. The relevant parts are g and b. We showed that if ax equals zero has only the trivial solution, then a's determinant is non-zero. So if ax equals zero has a non-trivial solution, then the determinant of a must be zero. And again, that determinant is the Ronskian of the functions. So the Ronskian of x is forced to be zero. But recall the order of things. We assumed the functions were linearly dependent, which led to the fact that the Ronskian must be zero. How could we use the Ronskian to learn about the linear dependence or linear independence? Well, we would think about the contrapositive of what we just said. We just showed that assuming linear dependence implies the Ronskian is zero. So if the Ronskian is non-zero, the functions must in fact be linearly independent. So this is the contrapositive of the implication that we just walked through. If the functions f1 through fn have n minus 1 continuous derivatives on the real numbers, and if the Ronskin of these functions is not identically zero from negative infinity to infinity, that means that the Ronskin is not equal to zero for all values of x in this interval, then the functions are linearly independent. So it's, it's fine if the Ronskin is zero at some x value in the interval, but for it to be identically zero means that it's equal to zero for every x in the interval. And if that's not the case, if the Ronskian is not identically zero, if it's not equal to zero for every x in the interval, then the functions are linearly independent. All right, as promised, let's now use the Ronskian to show that these three functions are linearly independent. These functions are, of course, infinitely differentiable, so we can construct the Ronskian. The Ronskian is the determinant of the matrix whose rows are the successive derivatives of our three functions. The zeroth derivative, so just the functions themselves, and then the first derivatives, and then the second derivatives. The one goes to zero instantly, and with the e to the x's, we just have some chain rule. All right, now we're taking the determinant of a three by three matrix. We can easily do this with a cofactor expansion along that first column, which is almost all zeros. So it's going to be one multiplied by the determinant of that submatrix, which is just e to the x times four e to the two x, so four e to the three x, minus two e to the two x times e to the x, so minus two e to the three x, and that's just two e to the three x, which is certainly non-zero, because e to the 3x is always non-zero. So the Ronskian is non-zero. If the functions were linearly dependent, we saw how the Ronskian would have to be zero. So since the Ronskian isn't zero, we know that the functions aren't linearly dependent, which is to say they are linearly independent. Since the Ronskian is not identically zero on the reals, these three functions are linearly independent. So I hope you'll agree that's a pretty interesting procedure that can be useful for determining if functions are linearly independent. It involves determinants, derivatives, some previously proven equivalences. It's a lot of mathematical power. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you want some more examples of using the Ronskian, I'll put links in the description to relevant lessons. This presentation is largely adapted from Howard Anton's Elementary Linear Algebra textbook. Link in the description if you're interested in buying it. It's a great textbook. Also, be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.